Oi you, it's time for another episode of Dorothy and the Dealer. Let's tune into the conversation. Back in the USSR. <laughs> when two tribes go to war. Um, yes, that's probably a relative song, isn't it? Who mm. sang it? Frankie Goes to Hollywood. That's right. And it was 1984. <coughs> Anybody who's done Mastermind of Money will know that song intimately. Yeah. And it was before. Um, it's a funny thing because it was so taboo to be gay back then. Yeah. Right. And nobody really twigged on that these were like four gay men <laughs> as gay <laughs> as Christmas. And they were, um, you know, their videos were actually <laughs> really provocative were sexually. They? I really, remember seeing Really quite debaucherous. And they were, they were full on, you know, until people started to twig, you know. Oh, hold on a minute. Is that a leather cap he's wearing? Is that a jockstrap he's wearing? Are they chaps? Really? I don't <laughs> yeah. remember seeing it. it was in, but Frankie Goes to Hollywood were absolutely incredible. They were yeah. amazing. Ama- even today, I mean, we play some of their songs on some of the events. That's what I was going to say. The, um, the, 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 money. the songs are cool. But that, you know, uh, When Two Tribes Go to War was all about Russia and America. That's what it was about. Was the it? The video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was I don't Reagan. Know, I remember seeing it. It was Reagan in a, in a pit physically fighting... Um, Oh, I can't remember who the Russian leader was at the time. Um, Gorbachev? No, it wasn't Gorbachev. He came afterwards, oh. and um, yeah, it was basically Reagan in a, in a you know in a in a in a dog fight with people betting on who was going to win. You know, right? And it was all about the cold the cold war. Cold war. I remember that. Mm. I remember. Feeling and it was at as the time kid, at the end of the cold war. Yeah, I remember feeling as a kid that all this stuff was going on. It was just so big and not mm. knowing what was happening and. Mm. You would, there was just so much fear around. Like I remember being a kid and remember oh, and hearing you. that Man, we and were, knowing we about go, it. Yeah, we would go to school and we would do air raids at school. They would do practice air raids at school. Would they in yeah. Ireland? Yeah. Should there be? Should you hear this? You know, doon, 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 really? Doon, doon, that's what. I, and then the, in the background it goes. You know that whole yeah, siren yeah, comes yeah, on. Yeah. That was you were told. If that siren comes on, you. They used to have ads on TV. You know, in 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 in, in you know, in the in the face of a nuclear war, should there be a, a warhead go off in England, this is what you have to do. Really? And everybody had to get under the table and pull the table <laughs> off really? the table. Yeah. Like that's gonna stop you. From that's gonna save that's, your yeah. ass. How did you guys go? Well, we fucking had a really thick table <laughs> so we, we all lived. Like the chances uh, you were just if that happens, you're that's it. Yeah. It's all over, Red Rover. It's yeah, it's, it's goodbye, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. And now so you remember that stuff when you were young? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it was a long time ago when you were young, yeah, Mitch. Yeah, I yeah, know. <laughs> 50 years this year, yeah, fucking hell. 50. But you, th- I mean, I was 12, so it's 38 years this year that uh, that was really the, wow. end, the ending of, of, of the Cold War. And you know it ended because they, you know, they both came to a really, you know. Straightforward kind of realisation. Straightforward kind of concept that yep. if I press the button and you press the button, then I may as, may as well have... Not sent the warheads over to you. I may as well just blow up myself because mm. it's suicide. Now, now thinking back to that though, how much of that was just the same media hype that it is today? Do you I think, think I think media was a little bit more or honest. less, yeah, less um, sensationalist. Yeah, a little bit more honest back then. Mm. A little bit more honest, but it was the same thing, like. You've never picked up the fucking newspaper and read something truly, truly inspiring. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? I mean, like that has you know is truly, really, really inspiring because you know the well, people. Firstly, because we haven't picked up a newspaper in, in a long in time, forever. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, there's you know, it, th- I wonder what would happen if there was a newspaper that only showed inspiring, transformational things happening mm-hmm. in the world. That that's all it did. It didn't show anything other than true inspiration. Mm-hmm. You know, and true inspiration was out of this negative came this beautiful thing and this is how the world has mm-hmm. changed as a result of it. Mm-hmm. It's not uh, everything is plus, plus, plus. It's just balanced. It's More balanced. just balanced yep. and it's inspiring to read it. That's you what know, inspiring is. And it's, and it's inspiring information and transformational yep. stuff. I wonder what would happen in the world. I don't know. If, and I wonder how many people would <coughs> read that <coughs> stuff. Well, I wonder how many people would be in... Crisis because they're not used to um, having that because you know this the media provides us uh, an escape from like 
We are, it gives, we are, we are addicted to drama. We're, we're, they're addicted to drama and so they provide the drama – um, that may not be like th- that you can be addicted to. Yeah. That's so not maybe you, happening in they, your life. If at they the get moment. you addicted, then you behave like an addict. And as you behave like an addict, they know you're addicted to things that you're afraid of. Yeah. Right? So they now you behave like an addict. You don't want to feel those things. So through the ads, then afterwards, you start to see, they start to market to you things that make you feel good about yourself. That's a classic example of what we were talking about a minute ago. That CN, when CNN first started talking about um, Russia's move into the Ukraine and, you know, how Putin was lining them up against the border and how he'd started to make his way in. And halfway through, the fucking televised piece of media came an ad for fucking Applebee's. And everybody, they just stopped. They just stopped it and went straight and to Applebee's. singing and dancing. Singing and, and hey, of, fucking did uh, it. They, that was on, who posted, Joe Rogan posted yeah. that, right? Yeah. Um, a, a, a video footage from CNN. Yeah. Like live but I wonder footage. how many people in the world are starting to go, you know what? We just don't, we just <sighs> don't fucking believe you anymore. I we don't just know how many people because I think that... Mm, so going back for the last two years, we've been receiving information that has been out of balance in my perspective, okay? This is my opinion, Right. And people, I think, have started to clue on, hang on a second, that doesn't really make sense. Some of what is being portrayed doesn't really make sense. But then as soon as something else is portrayed, like literally, now this is other than Western Australia because Western Australia is still in that whole COVID space. But other than Western Australia, all the COVID news is gone now and it's all war news, right? And so as soon as it's transferred over here, it's like, oh, everybody who – understood that the media was probably not um, mm. not telling the whole truth and now biting in and thinking this is the whole truth. And I, I find that very confusing for me personally because I can't – I literally cannot listen to anything. That's the radio now. See the newspaper um, and I only come across that sometimes um, – um, when I'm at mum's or somewhere like that where they still get the newspaper um, or overhear the news without – I haven't listened to the radio in ages, right, because I just cannot listen to it's, it. It's and, yeah. and I can't hear it without actually hearing the the dishonesty and the, the one-sidedness of it and I mm. can't mm. – that nothing the the way the reason that it frustrates me personally is because we've spent 20 years now working with people to telling people there's two sides to every story right mm-hmm. or two sides to every everything when you only hear one side that to me should send alarm bells off to anybody and it feels like that's all we're hearing but just people, hearing but one do you side. not see that people in, not everybody are just not in tune with that sense. Does that make sense? So yeah. it makes it makes it doesn't make sense. So people are not in tune with that sense of hold on a minute. If I'm only hearing one side of this, there has to be another side. Yeah. And if I'm only hearing one side of this from organisations and media sources that notoriously lied to us mm-hmm. and have continued to lie to us. And not just in the last few years, over the forever, years. For ages, yeah. Forever. We've and been talking about this for a long time. Yeah, because, I, I mean, as we've said for years, media is lopsided, non-substantiated and completely misinformed information that has already happened that you can do nothing about. Mm-hmm. So what you're watching, you can do nothing about it. Mm-hmm. You can do absolutely nothing about what you're looking at yeah. and what you're watching. Yeah. You know, no matter what it is, yep. whether it's COVID, whether it's a- anything, you yep. can do nothing about what you're so reading. People so people... Th- so therefore, people, in some way, if you had... Like, if you if you think that the wealthiest people in the world are sitting around watching the fucking news, yeah. you're fucking wrong. Mm-hmm. Like, you're just wrong. That is... Do you think that that's what they spend their time doing? Mm-hmm. Like, they just don't. So, so when like some people in the world, like right now, are sitting next to the television, <coughs> watching everything as much as they can. So, if they're if you're watching everything, they just keep feeding you fucking nonsense and lopsided, non-substantiated mm-hmm. bullshit. You're going to keep watching, mm-hmm. and then they're going to be able to sell you something, and they're going to play to your insecurities, the fact that you're afraid, and say, hey, if you fucking buy this piece of chicken, 
you're going to mm-hmm. feel good about yourself. For I a feel little bit. For yeah. a little bit. You know, feed that part of yourself. You're going to feel good about yourself. Yeah, and that's not just sitting down and watching the news on your television. That's mm. Facebook. That's Instagram. That's yeah. everything. Um, and then what happens is, it, well, how I see it then is, and this is not to say that something is not happening, right? I'm That's not saying right. something's not but, happening. But, something's but, happening. But, but dude, but, something's been happening for, look at Yemen. Look at what's going on in mm-hmm. Yemen. Yeah. It's like why now, so <laughs> the question is why now, because wars are raging all of the time. And have done forever. And have done ever. forever. Why now are we putting our focus in here? Why now? What are we being distracted from right now? So it's like, for me, it's like I cannot in not even one little bit take on board what I'm seeing. And I'm not talking about one side. I'm talking about any side of this. Mm. It's like none of this fits because I'm not there. I'm not on the ground. I'm not watching. Yeah. Or I'm not, um, you know, when you're seeing t- video of people running away from blasts and stuff like that, and I'm not saying that hasn't happened and mm. that it's not happening. I'm saying you cannot trust what you're seeing but you because you don't know because you don't know how much of that is uh, like you, I've that's, seen but that's, so much of that's that a being fucking staged. Problem. Yes. That's a fucking problem. Yeah, because that for the for the, for the people that may be in that situation, us not being able to trust it. Correct. You know now they're mm. using that delusion of the loss of human life. Exactly. To fucking capture your consciousness and market you. And then get you which hooked is, on that. Yeah, which is disgusting. Mm-hmm. Like, wh- why, have we, why, have, why have we allowed that to happen? Why have we not stood up to that? Do you know what I mean? And you, you may have leaders around the world in their fucking sandpit, throwing their fucking toys out, getting annoyed at each other. I mean, when I heard it the other day, I was like, guys, it's fucking 2022. Like, this is 2022. What the fuck is, what, like, even if that is happening, what is going on? And there's nothing we can do about it. Mm. So what Well, I think that's the thing. I think people want to help, right? That feels, so I feel like the, it gives everyone purpose, right? This gives people a purpose when they don't have one on their own. Yeah. So let me just put something else out, right? Even what's happening in Queensland at the moment. Yep. So Queensland are in floods, mm. right? Mm. Now... Two weeks ago, right, there's segregation. You can't eat here if you haven't had a jab and you can if you have. You can't do this or do that. There's segregation going everywhere, right? Yeah. Now that's gone out the window (laughs) because a new thing because now are they – Going up to a person on a roof, yeah. right? A pregnant woman. A pregnant on the woman roof. who's sitting on the roof in her mm-hmm. house in Queensland and going, Oh, are you vaccinated? Should I let you come on this yeah. boat? Or should I or, let you drown? Or should I let you drown? Like, none of that's happening because humanity takes over, mm. right? When real crisis happens, you see humanity everywhere in that, mm. right? Mm. So the thing that they made you focus on, because this is not, this is not. The only way that we were focused on vaccinated and non-vaccinated, just as an example, is because there was a fear of one or the other. Does that Mm, make sense? On both sides. Fear of one or the other. Now, if that fear is no longer in the media anymore and they're not making you focus on that, now you've got a new fear. You've got a new issue. So now what happens is is that when it comes to the crunch, humanity takes over. We realise that underneath all of this we're human beings Mm. and we can band together and we can connect Right? Yep. Now, particularly for me, the people who are not in the zone and not in the area, we don't know what's happening. The only way to help is to control what is in your realm to control. Mm. Now, what's in your realm to control is to not be um, um, falling into the trap to me, of listening to stuff that has absolutely nothing to do with you, that may or may not be true, right? Mm. Because if you're in the rabbit hole, it's fine. You'll find out this information everywhere. But if you're in that rabbit hole and you need to find that out every two seconds, then your mind is occupied by what they want your mind to be occupied with, which is a distraction, Mm. right? So in the same with everything, you've got to control what's in your realm to control. So in the floods in Queensland, it's in their realm to control whether they go out and save people and help people and look after people. Hotels are opening up. 
Now, they're not saying are you vaccinated or not. They're saying if you need a place to stay, you can stay here, no charge, yeah. because your home is being destroyed. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm talking about. They're things that are in your control to be able to do. Mm-hmm. So what's in your control to be able to do is be the best version of yourself that you can be. You don't get to help those people by playing small. You don't get to help those people by being distracted, Mm. by not living your best life. Mm. And that's what it's, it's a, I really, I didn't realize this. I mean, we've been talking about it for years, but I really didn't realize this until like a few years back, right? Where I really realized how much of a virus is actually, um, the media, the, what the media is doing. It's so, it's so, it's got people so hooked mm. that they literally will, uh, they will literally There's change no the transe- trajectory of their own lives. They're no, not consciously aware that they're being hooked in. And I'm not talking about them as in some elusive them. I get hooked in. Yeah. You get, we yeah. all get hooked in to yeah. some degree, yeah. right? So it's uh, when I'm saying this, I'm not talking about everyone out there. I'm talking about me as well. Yeah. We don't, we don't, we don't get to help by playing small. We just don't. And playing small is not living the best example of your life that you can live. Mm-hmm. Being distracted from your vision by anything that's out there, not just, not just the last couple of years, anything coming forward. It's like switch the goddamn thing off. Whatever you're going to know. Oh. Whatever you're going to know about, you're going to know about. You're going to find out about it. Someone's going to yep. tell you. If you're meant to know it, you will hear it. But hold on. Do we, people have to understand what that means. Yeah. It means if you don't trust the source you're getting your information from, then switch it off. And when you switch it off, you the source that you're meant to trust will find you. Yeah. If you don't trust the source you're getting it from, if you can't trust it, so how do you know you can't trust it? Because when you watch it, it makes you feel energyless, uninspired, like someone has come and you know dropped a shit in your lounge room. Yeah. That's literally. You will feel annoyed, angry, pissed off, like lost, they lost. They fucked your day up. You feel helpless, mm. and you feel you feel you you feel untrusting mm-hmm. of yourself. Does that make sense? 100%. So therefore, switch that source off and allow a source to find you and you'll know the source that is congruent with the longevity of life because it will vitalize you. Mm-hmm. And you will know, hey, this is what I'm meant to be hearing right now mm-hmm. and you will trust yourself and listen to yourself. So we were talking yesterday before you left because we were working at my place yesterday. We were talking yesterday before you left about the way that we can do that just for ourselves and actually asking ourselves about, I'm just going to use, I'm Italian, I have to use my hands even though no one can see it. Yeah. Um, like having the, you know, where you are now, you've got a perspective of the world from where you are now. And if you act from that place, you are always going to be acting in the short term. You're never going to be acting in the long-term plan and you're always going to allow yourself to get distracted. If you view your life from the person that you want to be in five years' time Mm -hmm. and retrospectively kind of look back on that and go, in order for me to get to this place, how do I have to act? How do I have to behave? What would she be doing? How Mm. would she be thinking? Your actions now take on a totally different meaning Mm -hmm. because five year, the, the me in five years would not be getting distracted. The me in five years with the goals and dreams that I have will not be getting refocused, Mm -hmm. will not allow myself to get sidetracked by X, Y, Z because I know that that's going to take me down a path that is totally Mm -hmm. incongruent with the path I want to be on. Mm -hmm. So the way to really combat the, the, that whole grip that outside distractions have on you. Mm -hmm. um, And particularly we're talking about the media at the Mm -hmm. moment is to have a plan is to look and see how you're going to be in five years. What does that look like for you? And start living that now. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I think you can probably describe it. In, you used well, different I, I think words you've got, you've got to take you – if you're looking at yourself in five years and you have <coughs> – you're, you're living a whole, connected, free, unlimited life, mm. what advice – would you be taking from that person when it comes to making and, and making decisions choices? and choices when yeah. it comes to making choices 
be be your own counsel yeah. from where you want to be. How? What would you? Would yourself in five years' time be telling you to wake up every morning and switch on the media? Listen to the media on the way into And the person who the is achieving that in yeah. five years, what they whatever say, That's wanna... where you need to put your fucking yeah. focus right now. Yeah. Because the truth about it is that's not what it would tell you. No, 100% not. It would be telling you switch off all distractions. You want to be in a situation where if you're at a party and someone comes up and starts to talk to you about war, that you are able to look at them and go, what war? What war? I haven't, I'm sorry, I haven't got any time for that conversation. I, I, haven't got to, I, I don't have time to look at that stuff. And they go, what? I don't have time to look at that, to listen to that. So what do you spend your time doing? Uh, following my vision. Mm -hmm. Now, can you imagine the fucking conversation you're going to have at that moment? Mm -hmm. Following your vision? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Following my vision. Doing what I love. Mm -hmm. Doing what makes me feel connected, whole, awake, aware, what inspires Alive. me. Alive. Alive. That's what I have my time mm. focused on. Now, can you imagine if we all fucking focused on that? So just exactly, because I've just had a thought, right? The time that you spent... In that view of the five years from now you, right, in that time that you would have now, from your perspective now, been watching the news and doing all that sort of stuff, what if you could be creative in that time? How creative yep. could you be in that time? And the truth about it is, is the you that you're now focusing in on that stuff is trying to protect you, Yeah. right? The person in five years' time wants you to create. Yeah. And remember creation and protection, they you can you can only do one of the two things. The frontal over the brain will only allow you to protect, right? Because mm -hmm. it's in fear, or it will allow you to create. And when you're creating, there's no need to protect. Mm -hmm. And when you're protecting, you cannot create because you're too busy protecting. So it's basically are you creating or are you just holding on? And people are like trying to hold on to this semblance of a life, mm. like even these last few years, was just like, oh, I don't want to die, I don't want to die. But in the meantime, they're not fucking living. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They're not actually living the life that they mm. aspire to, that they would love, that they're, that inspires them and makes them light up and makes them feel filled with life, you know? Yeah. They're just living a life that's half lived mm. in, in the way I see it. Mm. Because it's like, it's like getting to the pearly gates, you know? And um, St. Peter saying to you, so <coughs> did you achieve your dreams? And you look and go, no, no, no. I was fucking really distracted down there. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I was busy looking at this and this and this. I just, oh God, there was so much going on down there. And how much of it came off? You know, they reckon... How much of what you worried about actually, actually happened? happened. Mm. It's like 93% of it never happens. <laughs> so you spend all this time worrying. Fucking worrying. But wouldn't you rather be at the pearly gates going, yeah, I fucking gave it everything I've got. I had all these distractions I could have got sucked into, but I didn't. I just mm. went for it. Mm. I just knew what I wanted to do and I just fucking went for it. Yeah, 100%. Um, I was just thinking before we finish up about... Um, a lot of, at the moment, a lot of my Facebook reminders are of us travelling mm. um, and today's come up, it's been, I don't know, 12 years or something since one of our India trips, mm. 14 years since one of our India trips and another eight since another one and whatever. And um, just as you were talking now, actually as I was talking a bit earlier, I remembered our trip to the, the first trip to the Caribbean with mm. the masterminds of the Caribbean mm. where we had mm. Demartini, Dispenza and Jack Canfield. <coughs> yep. And one of the things Jack Canfield talks about is that five-year thing. Mm -hmm. And remember we all had that party. I don't know if we've talked about this on the podcast before, but what mm. we did is before – we before the guys travelled with us on that cruise, yeah. they were told we were going to have a party, yeah. and they needed to come as themselves in five years' time. Yeah. And they had to dress up, and for the duration of that party, we're drinking, we're dancing, we're having a great right. time. Jack Canfield's there. We're all doing our thing. For the duration of that party, we were only allowed to speak as our five. It, our, ourselves in five years' time. That's right. And so people were dressing up in these most amazing outfits. Mm. Some of them were in thongs and beach clothes. Other people were, you know, carrying around bags of money and stuff like that. But something happens when you act as if. Something happens when you show up as that person. Mm. And I don't think people realise the power of that because mm. when you literally show up that with that as that person – the rest of the shite literally doesn't have room in your in your yeah. in your sphere. That doesn't mean you don't care, and that doesn't mean that you don't 
whatever. You care in the way you need to care. But when you get sucked into something that may or may not be true, something that may or may not be inflated, something that may or may not be, um, you know, relevant to your life, you all you're doing is you're literally sabotaging yourself. You're literally living a half-life because of what's going on out mm, there mm. instead of actually staying focused and living as the version of who you are and the wor- version of who you want to be. So, I mean, uh, just imagine making the statement af- after coming off this where from now on, any time that anybody brings anything up that is a distraction, mm. you make a choice to say, I don't have time for those sorts of conversations anymore. Mm. I'm only focused on the things that inspire me yeah. or are part of my vision. Yeah. So uh, I don't mean to be real, but I don't have I don't know anything about that because mm-hmm. I don't have time to focus on those things. Yeah. I only have time to focus on the things that are inspiring to me. Yeah. Can you imagine making I that? Know. that that is totally different your, your new state energy. Yeah. Yeah. I like it's going that. to feel fucking awkward. It's going to feel uncomfortable at yeah. first, mm. but eventually yeah, I mean that's going to become your reality. Mm. You know, and I think that well, if we could all make that change to do that, and w- that's everyone at some yeah. level, everybody's not doing that, and it's about okay, this is asking you to step up in a different way. Mm. Do not allow yourself to be distracted. You are worth so much more than that. Yeah, put it down. Every switch single, it off. everybody is worth so much more than that. Yeah, um, and that doesn't take away from what's actually happening. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I know <laughs> I've got clients in the Gold Coast and who are so, like their houses are underwater. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sending my love. I'm doing what I can. If I can help in any way, I will. But I can see those people. I can see that's real because it's actually happening. And I know how to help in those individual situations. But in the meantime, I can't do anything to other than live my best life so that when it comes time for me to help in another way, I've got something to give because I'm living my best life, you know. Mm. Anyway, that's how I see it. Yeah. Turn off the goddamn. And and, and, and you know, plug in and tune in to something that inspires you. That's different. You know? Yeah, hundred percent. Tune out of that and plug in and tune into something that inspires you. Hundred percent. I think this has been a good chat. Loved it. Hey, whether this is you at the beginning of your personal development journey or you're perhaps immersed in your growth and transformation, at MJB Seminars we have everything to help you live an inspired life. If this episode resonated and you're looking for more information on how to have an actual breakthrough and transform your life, visit us over at mjbseminars.com.au and book yourself in for a complimentary discovery coaching call. Also, make sure you like and follow us over on Instagram and Facebook and review and subscribe to Dorothy and the Dealer today.